something in his hands. It looks like knives. Drop your weapon! I repeat, drop your weapon! Drop your weapon! Drop them! Those aren't weapons! Those are his hands! Please, we know him. All right, cuff him. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the playbook. All right, we have the playbook. As much as they've tried to keep it from us, we actually know what was happening. And we know what all of the attacks on Trump have been about in the first place. There has been a a 10 year, we are going now on 10 years of a cover up of a single action that took place under Barack Obama and brings us to this very day and to the very court cases that Donald Trump is facing right now. And we now understand the full matrix of what has happened. We have the documents, we have the proof, we have the evidence, you'll see it on this program. All you need to do is read. These documents, by the way, have been redacted. The CIA, by the way, has, have refused to comply with congressional subpoenas. And what does that mean? What does it mean when they're hiding from you the truth? Well, it means that we are over the target, ladies and gentlemen. I'll show you exactly where that target comes from. Here is a uh, here's a fun little video of the day that power was transferred between Barack Obama and Donald Trump. You'll see Barack Obama and Donald Trump clap each other on the shoulders, say hello and goodbye. Michelle Obama uh, not liking the kiss that she gets from Orange Man. <laughs> but nonetheless, what are you going to do? Okay, what are you going to do? Donald Trump whispers something in her ear, makes her laugh, and Barack says, mm, get the hell out of here. We're getting out, and we're going. And they leave. But did they ever really leave? And more importantly, what did they leave behind? Barack Obama left behind a series of traps, little unbeknownst to Donald Trump, little known by Trump and his team, unfortunately, and I, I have this on good authority, that I think Donald Trump was ill-prepared for the rat's nest that he was entering here in Washington, D.C. Little did Donald Trump know, much like myself, okay, and many of the uh, sort of clear-eyed, uh, optimistic Americans who watched this happen and just said, Hey, you know what? What a beautiful thing. The peaceful transfer of power. One guy to the next guy. Obama never left. Not only that, Obama left a series of bear traps. You know, big metal kind get caught in your foot. You got to amputate your leg for Donald Trump all throughout the Oval Office, but all throughout the intel agencies. And these poison pills uh, have now been riddled and are coming to fruition in the Donald Trump cases. And now we know it. We know it. It goes back to a day in the summer when Donald Trump was running for president. The year's 2016. Donald Trump is not doing very well, at least in the polls. He's running against Hillary Clinton. Yet the sheer prospect of having Donald Trump as president terrifies so very much the deep state and the super state and the uniparty, the head of which has been fully and totally usurped by Barack Obama, who was groomed, obviously, for this position for a very long time in order to usher in a, a transformation of America. And they weren't even ashamed of that. They literally, they, a transformation of America. They, they told you what they were about to do. Now, these Marxists, these intel agencies, go back to Joseph McCarthy. He talked about how the CIA has been infiltrated by Soviets. He's like, okay, go back, go back to Joseph McCarthy. No, no one has aged more like a fine French wine than Joseph McCarthy, who talked about the communist infiltration of the top levels of our government. And holy moly, was this guy right? And lo and behold, you have the assurance in of Barack Obama, who brought into sort of this, this great clarity, this sort of unified perspective of government bureaucracy and oligarchy and control of the American people. And you could argue that that is when the vast decline of our freedoms and the trajectory of this nation 
began to crumble. They never counted on Donald Trump. They never count. They they counted on a Jeb Bush. Jeb Bush was supposed to just lose with dignity, right? Which is the role of Republicans. Lose with dick. Be the dog on the leash. Remember Jeb Bush? Please clap. Be the dog on the leash. Lose with dignity. They never counted on Donald Trump. Hillary Clinton went to Donald Trump's wedding. Bill Clinton went to Donald Trump's wedding. They were pal. They never counted on it. They, he was the wild card. Donald Trump, who's been saying he he might run for president for 30 years, finally did it. And they were so scared, they decided to hatch a plot against Trump. They ran this plot out of the CIA. It was a clandestine plot to bump, meaning spy on, Donald Trump's advisors. And what happens when you get an advisor that you can spy on, so the FISA court gives you the warrant. The Republicans just reauthorized FISA. It's unbelievable. The FISA court gives you the warrant to spy on these people. And then what you can do is you can spy on their network, right? So you can go second, or you can jump people, all right? So when Donald Trump's advisors are calling Donald Trump, you can spy on Donald Trump. It's that easy. It's that easy. It's, it is then legal to spy on the candidate for president. And this is where Russiagate comes from. They knew about Russiagate. They knew it was a lie. Barack Obama was briefed it was a lie. But more importantly, they knew of it. They orchestrated, authored, and implemented a spying campaign against Donald Trump because they viewed him as such a threat. Donald Trump, of course, to the great horrors of this group, would go on to win. Donald Trump then was able to see what they had done to him and worked for four years to release these documents, but was stopped at every turn. The CIA has a binder that shows exactly what happened, and that binder went missing, and thus the raid on Donald Trump's home. Thus, the order of the Obama-Biden regime, I will not call it the Biden White House, it is the Obama-Biden regime, to raid Donald Trump, because Donald Trump has the evidence, and that's what they were seeking. Now, ladies and gentlemen, uh, this has been obviously written up. It's been covered. It's quite clear that our intel agencies had a hand in all of this. This is common knowledge that the intelligence apparatus of America was turned like a like white blood cells uh, against against an agent inside of our own body politic, a Republican president who we all beloved, who we like, who represents us and the spirit of the American people. Joe Biden does not represent the spirit of the American people. Joe Biden makes people depressed in spirit and in form and in person and in politics and in economics. Joe Biden is a depression. Donald Trump is the crystallization of the American spirit. It is not perfect. It is wild. It is unrestrained. It's fun to watch. It's entertaining. And most importantly, it's powerful. And they needed to destroy that. I mean, they had been doing that through Barack Obama for the last eight years. The goal was to actually mute America, to castrate America, lead from behind. Remember that? A diminished America, a weakened America, an America with no strength. That was the goal. They've since, of course, amplified that goal, it ratcheted it all up during Biden's residency in the White House, but it got totally derailed by Donald Trump. That threat, of course, was so existential, they must spy on him. The spying on Donald Trump is the reason for the raids, is the reason for Jack Smith's case. The binder from the CIA that has gone missing is the reason that all this is happening to Donald Trump. And Donald Trump's exposing of how truly rotted and corrupted our clandestine intel agencies are and how they view you as the enemy. Remember that meme Trump always shares? They're not after me. They're after you. I'm standing in the way. Yes, your government views you as the enemy. And they always have, at least for my lifetime, for a very long time. They always have. They have always viewed the American people as the enemy. And so they come for us. They rip away our civil liberties. They just they desecrate our constitution. And they must destroy our heroes. They must destroy the people who are our champions, like Donald Trump. They started to destroy Donald Trump in the year 2015 and 2016 before he ever became president. 
they began this process. We are simply living through phases of this process ongoing, all right? But this all started with Barack Obama. It's being continued with Barack Obama's third term in the White House. Ladies and gentlemen, the CIA spied on Donald Trump. They hatched this plot years ago, and we are just living through the end stages of it. Here we go. Brand new details about how Obama's CIA targeted Trump and started the entire Russia hoax. For years, we were told that tips from an Australian diplomat tipped off the FBI after a random conversation with Papadopoulos, a no-name 20-something. But according to new reporting by Michael Schellenberger and Matt Taibbi, the whole thing was a CIA setup. Former CIA director John Brennan identified 26 Trump associates to be targeted by the Five Eyes Intelligence Alliance, and then those interactions were the targets and were targeted by the FBI as suspicious. And that's how the FBI launched the Russia collusion hoax. The details of this entire operation have been stored in a top secret binder in a secret room in Washington. Trump ordered the whole thing declassified. And now the rumor is that the binder might be missing. Hmm. OK, so what does that say? about the raid on Mar-a-Lago. Was this what they were going after? That binder, of course, proves that the intel agencies have been turned against the American people and that the intel agencies are a weaponized political arm of permanent Washington. It's not even the Democrat Party. They'll do this to Democrats. They'll do this to Republicans. They'll do it to anyone who threatens their power. Just Democrats happen to have been, you know, simped and gimped and ball gagged and are now like the, subserv the, the servants of the deep state. You remember the libs of, I don't know, like the 80s and 90s? I was around in the 80s and 90s. I was a little, little kid, but like, I, I kind of like remember the archetype of the hippie lib that was like, no FBI, no CIA, no permanent Washington, no deep state. These pieces are evil. Whew, they got rid of that fast, didn't they? Wow. Remember libs like protesting the Patriot Act? What a disgrace, by the way, the George W. Bush presidency is possibly one of my greatest, possibly my greatest professional regret, actually, supporting that presidency. I was young. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And I wasn't really tied into what freedom actually means. But nonetheless, ladies and gentlemen, it's that apparatus put in place by Republicans, Democrats, subservience alike to absolutely lavish, gluttonous power upon permanent Washington and their spying apparatuses to destroy people. And that is exactly what they did to Donald Trump. They legally spied on him. Michael, explain how this all started with the CIA picking these 26 Trump people. Yeah, good to be with you, Jesse. Well, obviously, this is an extremely serious story and serious allegation by multiple credible sources that Public and Racket, that's Matt Tybee's uh, publication, have spoken to. These are people that are close to the House intelligence investigation of how the Russia collusion hoax began. The story, as you mentioned, was that, oh, we were just informed by foreign intelligence about this. Our sources tell us a very different story, which is that this was initiated by the U.S. government. It came from within the U.S. government's intelligence community, including the CIA, that they asked the so-called Five Eyes Nations intelligence agencies, that's the other English-speaking nations, including Britain and Australia, to spy on 26 Trump associates, or at least they had a list of the 26 associates that were identified. This is new information. Some people have theorized about this and speculated about it. Uh, we feel very confident that our sources were in a position to know and are very credible in this report. And it's obviously a very serious allegation because this is illegal spying and it's illegal election interference. So Michael Schellenberger had a number of sources within the intel agencies saying the reason why the raids on Trump happened. And that's that's a that's the big one. OK, nobody cares about look, Letitia James got fine. Donald Trump, Alvin Bragg's going to fine Donald Trump. It's all a humiliation ritual, right? It's all like a practice in humiliation. It's all utterly disgraceful. They're doing so much damage to New York. They're doing far more damage to the state of New York and their party than they are to Donald Trump, all right? Donald Trump be able to get out of this. He always has. Uh, this mishandling of classified documents case, I mean, this thing's real as a heart attack. 
This one's tough. This could put Donald Trump in prison for the rest of his life. You know, the chances of Donald Trump going to jail in New York uh, is slim to none. It kind of depends on what this lunatic judge decides. But the chances of Donald Trump if found guilty of these federal charges going to jail, the Jack Smith charges, these are serious. So they needed a predicate to raid Trump. The predicate was the binder that's gone missing with the CIA information about the spying on Trump. Trump could never get it declassified. Trump, through his plenary power to declassify, brought it with him from the White House, presumably. I don't know that for a fact, but that's what all the smart people are saying, and that's what Michael Schellenberger is saying here. Michael Schellenberger is saying that this Mar-a-Lago raid was to hunt down a missing CIA binder that detailed exactly how the organization was used to destroy your candidate for president, funded with your tax dollars. Ooh, what a sweet system it must be to work for the deep state. We get to, they force us at point, at, at point of gun on penalty of prison, they use force to take money from us to destroy our candidates and destroy our freedoms. Man, it's a bad deal. It is a bad deal. Modern day America is a bad deal. It's a con game. And they, they have now used it as the predicate to put Trump in prison. A reminder that the person who launched all this was Barack Obama. And when he claps Trump on the side, when he, when he claps Trump on the side and says goodbye to him in Washington, D.C., all of this was launched. All of this was already in play. Watch. There has been widespread speculation that this binder was the was the reason or a reason for the FBI raid of Mar-a-Lago. And we'll be discussing that tomorrow. But obviously, if this binder contains what we have been told that it contains, which may include raw intelligence, information showing that the U.S. government, the CIA and the intelligence community of the U.S. government initiated the Russia collusion hoax, that it did not occur in the way that the official story, including the Durham investigation, had portrayed it, then that's extremely serious information. And it may be if the FBI then went to go get it in order to continue the cover up of this information, that obviously adds an even more dramatic wrinkle to this. Again, we'll have more to say about it tomorrow, but this is a huge, huge story. I mean, I can't I've been thinking about it in the history of the United States of America. Have we ever had something like this where the intelligence community was weaponized against a political candidate? And, weapon, and using our foreign allies to do it, I, I can't think of a more important or dramatic story. Yeah. Can, I mean, can you? There is no, of course, more dramatic story. It means that everything is fake. Nothing is real. The country that you think you live in is all a mirage, a carefully crafted mirage to make you think that you have freedom, but it's Plato's cave. You know the allegory, Plato's cave, right? It's all the people that are sitting there looking at the shadows. It's like a fire in the back of the cave, and they're making shadows but the people only look one direction in the cave. So they see the shadow. They think that that's what a horse looks like, but it's just smoke and mirrors. The whole thing is Plato's cave, this whole country, Kabuki theater. It's not real. Your liberties are not real. And these people act in, in, in totally uh, unconstitutional, like not like it's not unconstitutional because that, was, that would assume that they even know of the constitution. It's, uh, uber constitutional. It's, it's over the constitution. It's as though the constitution doesn't exist. Right, so, is though there th that the natural rights written down by our founders don't apply to them, and never have, and are fake, right, and don't exist actually. And the only rules are the rules they make up as they go for their own power. Somebody who has been obviously criticizing this for a very long time and is proving so right. There are a few people that have been proven so right on this. Cash Patel's one. Mike Davis is another one. Here's Mike Davis talking exactly about this uh, from months ago. And it just rings like a bell. But we really don't know what these records are, do we? I don't know what they are. I mean, we got an affidavit that is all blacked out. I don't even know what they're talking about. Do you? Does anyone? Well, I know from the Biden Justice Department leaks to Newsweek that they're they're going in there. The, the whole point of this raid was to go get President Trump's declassified personal copy of the Crossfire Hurricane records because they're so damning for Obama, Biden, Hillary, James Clapper, Susan Rice, the FBI, the intel community. That's what this raid is about. They, this was so unprecedented and unnecessary and unlawful, unless you understand that was the real reason for this. OK, and, and finally. So Cash Patel, echoing Mike Davis, 
at what point, like, if you have Cash Patel, Mike Davis, and Julie Kelly saying the same thing, then you, then, then you are 100% dead on over the target, along with Jesse Waters. I really like Jesse Waters' show. Okay? Tucker's been talking about this. This is the most important story in the country. They spied on Trump. Trump found out about it. And then there was an investigation run by Cash Patel through Congress that exposed everything. And then they went and classified his investigation. Wild. Cash Patel explaining to us what he can say. It is, of course, a felony to leak classified information. So Cash Patel has to be very careful. He can only talk about it. Cash Patel knows everything. He knows both sides, right? So you have the dark side of the moon, and the light side of the moon. Cash Patel knows the light side of the moon has been declassified. You can talk about Russiagate. You can talk about how fake it was, how Hillary Clinton paid for it. But the dark side of the moon is how the intel agencies weaponized Russiagate to spy on Trump. Cash Patel is saying that's what they raided Trump for. Because they cannot have that coming back on them. Watch. It does seem like there is like full scale panic. A lot of buttons being hit right now. One of those buttons is a binder went missing of CIA material. This binder was locked inside of a safe, which was locked inside of another safe called a turducken, I guess. You would probably know more about that than I, but sh these alarm bells went off and we did a whole show yesterday on it about, wait a second. So the CIA is losing these binders of Russian intelligence information. That sounds like what Cash told us nigh on 18 months ago when he was in studio. And sure enough, you said they have all of this information exonerating Donald Trump in the Russiagate uh, ordeal hoax, and the government is sitting on it. They won't allow it to be made public. And now suddenly those binders go missing. What's going on, Cash? It is the ultimate government con job. Nobody lost that binder. The Russians and the Iranians didn't break into the Central Intelligence Agency, then break into a skiff, then break into a safe, and then secretly escape with the materials so they could blame Donald Trump for missing documents. The CIA knows exactly <laughs> where that binder is. So does the Department of Justice. But their grundoons in the media are like, how do we turn this on Donald Trump? Because it actually exonerates Donald Trump. So what do we do? We make it look as if Donald Trump stole the binder which is completely preposterous. They actually know that. And oh, by the way, there's an email from the Department of Justice to the National Archives that says the binder has been returned. Thank you for giving it to us. So what's going on with this binder? What is the predicate here? Again, the Daily Mail has covered this highly classified binder 2016 election interference went missing during Trump's last days in the White House. CIA still searching for the file vanished from a safe. Ladies and gentlemen, this is the uh, this is the Daily Mail highly classified binder with documents related to the 2016 Russia Russia election interference. What does that mean? Read spying on Trump disappeared during the final days of the Trump administration. Where'd it go? Why would they want to find it so badly? And would they raid Donald Trump in order to get those secrets back? Well, ladies and gentlemen, uh, there has been sort of a bombshell release of documents, thanks to Judge Eileen Cannon, in the classified documents case that has been manipulated and has been brought forward by the Biden Department of Justice. And it proves beyond a shadow of a doubt that this was orchestrated, that this was designed. The raids on Trump, the spying on Trump, the missing binder, all of it's connected. And that it is orders from the top. There is no independence. There is no judicious reasoning here. Waiting of both sides. In fact, <laughs> there is a actually there is a completely and totally malevolent move to potentially get Trump killed in all of this. I'll cover all that in a second. First off, reported developments by Julie Kelly, who will join the show in just a moment, from the documents unsealed in the Jack Smith take down Trump trial show this, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, and we're going to have Julian to talk in depth about all this reporting, but the top line here, Jack Smith, the prosecutor of Donald Trump, hid the fact that the National Archives had several conversations with the Biden White House about bringing charges against Trump. Well, that doesn't seem very independent, does it? U.S. Attorney General Merrick Garland lied about the independence of the investigation. The Biden White House counsel asked to be kept in the loop about criminally charging Trump. 
Biden's DOJ instructed the National Archives on how to cover up their coordination. The Department of Energy discovered Trump had an active security clearance after he was indicted. So they retroactively terminated it because that would be great for an argument. Hey, I got a security clearance, morons. The criminals are in the Biden White House prosecuting Trump. They're dirty, filthy fingers over all of this. And who is the Biden White House? Again, it is so important to understand that Joe Biden is a meat puppet. He is not uh, alive. They have to hold up a little mirror under his nose every single day to see if it fogs up. Like Joe Biden isn't real. All right. The entire Biden administration is staffed from stem to stern, totally and completely animated. Like a reanimated corpse, like a Frankenstein of Obama apparatchiks, everyone from top to bottom. It is the Obama 2.0 administration. It's so interesting. What you'll see in this photo is a hilarious photo. It's been memed a million times. But what you'll see in the photo is all these familiar faces from the Biden regime. It's this sort of iconic photo of the sadness and the bitterness. And like, you can see everyone weeping and stuff, like looking at Barack Obama, like knowing what's about to happen, knowing the crimes they committed and the expo like what's about to be exposed when Donald Trump comes in and goes and smashes their playhouse that they thought they'd own for the next thousand years. In that photo, the interesting part about it is that you can see all of these people, like do you see these multiple people that now actively work for Joe Biden? It's the same administration. See Valerie Jarrett there? See Jen Psaki? <coughs> there you go, look at this. Jen <laughs> This is Jen Psaki. Again, this is Obama White House, right? Look at Jen Psaki. Look at how macabre she looks. It's like an old Dutch painting. Look how sad she is. And you can go through and just name them one after another, but especially at the DOJ. This is what they want. Ultimately, and we covered this on the show yesterday, but I want to like just touch on this really quickly. They want Trump in prison and they want Trump in jail. Oh, yeah, there's another one. That one's really good. <laughs> that was really good. He's got, yeah. Eric, can you pop that last one up at Jen Psaki? So I can look at Jen Psaki. <laughs> Again, it's like an old Dutch, it's like an old dark, it's like an old Dutch painting. <laughs> Susan Rice, every person in that image with all the bitterness and all the salt go, went and moved directly back into their old positions, but with promotions in the Biden White House. The Biden White House isn't real. Joe Biden isn't real. It is Barack Obama running the same operation that he had been running for eight years, and now he's got it all kicked off again, and it's on overdrive. Final thing, they want Trump dead. While Trump dead, and that's why these charges are being brought, there is a there is a move to strip Donald Trump of his Secret Service and put him into the public prison population. Marjorie Taylor Greene saying this yesterday. Democrats want Trump murdered. Democrats want to pass legislation that strips anyone in prison of Secret Service. And that means, of course, <laughs> the, 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 the credible threats that we know of against Donald Trump I mean, we detailed them in the show yesterday. People just walking up to Secret Service being like, I have a knife. I'm going to kill her here to kill Trump. One guy just did that. One guy, literally 25 year old guy, wanders up to Secret Service at the White House and said, I'm here to murder Trump. He has a knife in his hand and he tells Secret Service that. Imagine if Secret Service wasn't there. Leftist orcs literally stormed the White House to try and murder Trump. Also, we have all that on tape. The real insurrection, May, 20, May 20th, 2020. Democrats want Trump killed. The goal of putting him in prison is not to eliminate him uh, from the political landscape, although they hope that happens as a byproduct, is to eliminate his life. That is the intended goal. There is no other explanation for the legislation that is being pushed right now in the House to strip any person who has Secret Service protection uh, who goes to who goes into the federal penitentiary system. They actually talk about Donald Trump in their press release about this. Here's Marjorie. Not he is not invincible. He is a man. Uh, he's fighting as hard as possible. He's putting all he has into trying to win the election. But you also got to remember, he's at the same time he's trying to run for president again. He's having to put everything he has into defending himself against these rigged trials 
and this unbelievable perversion of our justice system. And the Democrats aren't sorry about it. They aren't going to back off of what they are doing. They literally want him dead. Benny Thompson introduced a bill to take away his Secret Service protection. That's how serious they are. They want President Trump dead. They want to lock him up in jail for the rest of his life so that he dies in jail. And they want to take away his Secret Service protection so that he is murdered somewhere in jail, possibly. This is how serious they are.